Hello, welcome to another edition of the Pace Report. I'm Brian Pace reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. 2012 has been a stellar year for saxophonist Joe Lovano. He's still riding high on the crest of his 22nd disc for Blue Note Records called Bird Songs, in which he pays tribute to the legendary Charlie Yardbird Parker. In addition to that, in April he performed at the inaugural International Jazz Day with the likes of Shaka Khan, Terrence Blanchard, and Christian McBride. Tonight we're going to sit down and talk about why he decided now that it was important to record a tribute record to Charlie Parker as well as talk about International Jazz Day and how jazz is being perceived around the world as well as here in the United States. <laughs> songs you decided to pay tribute to one of the originators of bebop and this disc is your 23rd disc for blue note and you're moving forward well uh, it's a little overwhelming to realize that over the last uh, 20 years or so I've had a chance to document so many different things on blue note records with musicians that I've been growing up with and people uh, that have inspired me through the years. And Bird Songs, my latest, uh, is a collection of some of Charlie Parker's great compositions, um, trying to put them together in a very personal way. Because you can't tell someone else's story, especially Bird. Bird was like the inspiration of, of uh, a lifetime for everyone that had heard him from the moment he emerged on the scene. <laughs> His genius as a musician and a, uh, is, is deeper than even his genius on the saxophone. He was a great composer and he just had a vision about uh, who he was as a man and how he could play and tell his personal story, you know. And for me, that's that really inspiring, you know. My dad heard Bird play live in Cleveland in the late 40s, early 50s and had all his recordings and never stopped talking about it during his lifetime. So I grew up uh, listening to Charlie Parker and, and realizing who he was and uh, all of his contemporaries, uh, Max Roach and Miles Davis and Dizzy Gillespie and Thelonious Monk, Kenny Clark, Art Blakey, you know, all the cats that he played with uh, created this music together as a community, you know, and, and uh, that's how I feel about today, right now. My quintet, us five, with double drummer configuration, piano, bass, and saxophones, uh, we travel in a world of music, and Charlie Parker is uh, uh, driving the ship, let's say, for in, in this particular period for me. 
But throughout my lifetime, uh, his inspiration has always been there. And the disciples, his disciples, which are Sonny Rollins and John Coltrane, Joe Henderson and uh, Wayne Shorter, and that's just to name a few saxophone players. But on every instrument, uh, folks were trying to get next to Bird, you know? Joe, in putting together a tribute record to anybody, the songs that you put together with us five, this had to be tedious, didn't it? Well, you know, I didn't look at it as a tribute record. It was an inspiration of, of uh, trying to figure out who I am as a player with the, with the inspiration of the genius of Charlie Parker. And picking the tunes came easy because they were songs that you hear so many people play and tunes that teach you how to play. Some of these tunes, when I was a kid, taught me how to play the saxophone, taught me how to play this music, taught me about the harm harmonic sequences and the rhythmic possibilities and the execution of the, of the the technical execution of some of his themes, you know, teach you how to play. So you live with that your whole life. Now it's a matter of uh, developing yourself and an approach of your own to put ideas together. So I took a tune like Donna Lee that's usually played at a very brisk tempo and I played it as a ballad. And the first time I did that and I was practicing and I played through it as this beautiful theme I heard Coleman Hawkins in that melody. And Coleman Hawkins, Bird was one of Coleman Hawkins' disciples. <laughs> so, you know, things came like that uh, in a real open, free, creative way, you know. Playing Yardbird Suite as a hymn, it's a spiritual. The first time I played through that, like, in that manner, man, it, it uh, put me in another world, man. So, so then to do it with an ensemble and to, to lead the flow of it, uh, you have to play with people you love to play with that you trust and that can lead and follow and create music together rather than uh, counting off a tempo and letting the tune play you or letting the tempo kind of dictate how you play, you know? Uh, trying to put things together in a real personal way. And dealing with Charlie Parker's music taught me a lot through the years about doing that. Us Five Quintet, you're having a very successful run with this, and I think 
two of the things that I think have really stuck out is one, the two drummers, and then also you've got Esperanza Spalding, who's not here, but is, she's, is, a part, she's a part of the group. She's a part of the group. Uh, we just recorded our third uh, recording. Uh, it's, it's called Cross Culture, and it features Esperanza as well as Peter Slovoff on bass. I have two basses on one piece together, but they're played separately also. And Lionel Lewecki joined us also on guitar uh, with James Wyman on piano, Otis Brown, and Francisco Mela on drums. Um, so th this next recording that's going to come out is, is, uh, is inspired by the world of music and the cult cross-cultural way we live together today on this planet to embrace each other, to embrace the music of the world, and how the cross-cultural um, life that's happening for us today in 2012 on this planet can, uh, can work together. And, and uh, it's a beautiful, incredible experience because some of the music is real tribal and it comes into the roots of uh, the earth. And with this particular ensemble and formation, we could really do that, you know, because uh, we've been playing together now for three, four years and exploring a lot of music together. And um, this next uh, this this next step for the group, which you heard some of that in this last set we just played, it's uh, it's a real earthy tribal kind of a feeling about creating music together in a real organic way. Putting together us five, the drumming and the percussion really adds a whole nother element to what you're doing. What was it that led you to bring two drummers together? And now that you're talking about the new project, two basses. Well, you know, through the years, some amazing recordings have been made with Art Blakey and Max Roach and Roy Haynes in double drummer and triple drummer configurations, drum ensembles, especially with Art Blakey's through the years, and Max, you know. Uh, John Coltrane had a double drummer period. Uh, Ornette Coleman also with Ed Blackwell and Billy Higgins. Through the years, I, I, I've really been fortunate to be in, you know, 
in, drawn into that music and that way of playing together. Uh, and I've had a chance through the years to play with Billy Hart and Andrew Cyril, for example, in a double drummer ensemble. I've played with Billy Higgins and Albert Tootie Heath together in a, a, a double drummer quintet. Um, so I've kind of uh, been really drawn to that through the years. And to put this group together uh, was a real focus for me to have an ensemble. As soon as you add the, the, the second drummer, I have my quintet. I have four quartets. I have nine trios, or ten trios, nine duos, and five unaccompanied voices. So now it's a matter of playing with space and digging each other and trying to create these textures that can happen in the quintet, and which we are doing, you know, and we're creating a, a way of playing together. But the approach is about finding those different combinations throughout the tunes. And uh, it's a beautiful exploration. Speaking of international, you took part of the inaugural International Jazz Day Festival, the, the, the Sunset Concert. Congratulations. I mean, you took the stage with some heavyweights. I mean, we're talking Shaka Khan, Terrence Blanchard, Christian McBride. What was your take on that, and what do you think that that did for jazz music internationally as well as here in the United States? Well, we've all been knowing each other and playing together for years. And it's an amazing community of musicians in the world of jazz. And it's a cross-generational experience and cross-cultural experience. And that's what makes this music happen, you know. That particular night was so beautiful with Tony Bennett, Wayne Shorter and Herbie Hancock, and Jack DeJanette, uh, Christian McBride, like you mentioned. And the moment that I played with Danilo Perez and Richard Bona and Jack DeJanette as a quartet, uh, and we touched on some of Thelonious Monk's music, Ask Me Now and Think of One, uh, I, I felt that I was really proud of that moment because we, we touched on Thelonious, and that's what this was all about. The Thelonious Monk Institute was the beginning of this... Uh, um, the process that led to that night. Herbie Hancock was uh, uh, announced maybe a year ago, uh, the ambassador of goodwill for UNESCO, and he is an amazing leader and spokesman and visionary and genius. And uh, I was really proud to be a part of that scene with Herbie and Wayne. And uh, of course, you mentioned Shaka Khan. It was fun to play with her and put something together uh, with her because she's an amazing, powerful voice and, and, and uh, Stevie Wonder and Esperanza Spaulding. I thought they had a beautiful moment on Midnight Sun that was very poetic. And Wynton Marsalis also with uh, uh, Christian and Vinnie Caliuta and Danilo Perez had another beautiful moment too. So throughout the, throughout the night there was a lot of different energy and, and uh, beautiful music that happened. And everybody was inspired to be there and um, to celebrate the, the world of peace and love that, that you have to.
does jazz music mean to you? It's a life force. It's, uh, it's, it's nature. It's the wind. It's the waves. The waves of sounds. It's the spirits. Um, the library of sounds and spirits that has happened through the years in, in the recorded music in jazz, we can visit. But to create that music spontaneously from night after night is a very spiritual journey. That'll do it again for another edition of the Pace Report, reporting live here at Birdland here in New York City. I'd like to personally thank Mr. Joe Lovano for his time, as well as the staff and management here at Birdland. As always, please visit my website, www.thepacereport.com, for my weekly column as well as my past segments. Until next time, remember, if it's in the groove, it'll make you move. Until next time, peace.